Hello and welcome to GitHub Checkout. I am Sasha Rosenbaum, a program manager at GitHub, and today we're talking about secret scanning. My guest today is Buki Adebayo. Buki, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, yeah, thanks, Sasha. I'm Buki. I am a product manager here at GitHub. I manage a couple of our security products, but today I'll be talking about secret scanning, one of the products that I've been managing for the past few months. All right, so let's jump right into secret scanning. So I know secret scanning for public repos has existed for a long, long time, and most of our users are kind of, they have an idea that we do this, but they don't exactly know how it works. So would you like to explain to us um, how it works behind the scenes? Yeah, so um, for public repos, what we do is we scan all the public repos, and we look for secrets um, for our, of our partners, so like, their developer credentials. So our partners will tell us, hey, our developer credentials are follow this particular regular expression. So can you search all the public repos and find those and send those to us? And so then we send those, them to our partners. Our partners then notify their customers or revoke the tokens that, and they notify them and say, hey, we found this particular um, credential in open source in public repos. It's compromised now. So like, maybe you should do something about that. All right. Um, Currently, the secret scanning engine is built using like Intel's you know, hyperscan. So we try to catch things right as soon as they're spilled. So it's really, it's a pretty quick turnaround in terms of as soon as a commit happens. Oh, very cool. So if as a developer, I checked in, say my Azure or my AWS API key, um, you're just immediately going to notify the partner and then probably that secret is going to be revoked. Yeah, basically. Yes, essentially, that's exactly what happens. It's a really good description. And it's Pretty quick, actually. I think within five minutes, we're able to do it and get it to the to the partner, and the partner is able to re to either revoke it or notify the user. So, for from the data that we have, how often does it happen? How often do people check secrets into source control? So it's about a million different detected secrets per month for us. Um, but some of those are obviously going to be false positives, and they're not necessarily real secrets. They just happen to um, match our partner's regular expression, but. A million is still like even if half of those were real, that's still a little a little uh stressful. I don't know. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Um but like for private repos, what we're finding is actually like we scanned about thirty seven thousand private repos over the past um few months, and only five thousand of those have detected secrets in them. So like it's not everybody by any stretch of the imagination that's committing secrets. It is still a it's a smaller number um, or percentage, but it's still, you know, 5,000 repos is still a little bit like, all right, we could do better. <laughs> right, we could definitely do better. Um, so I, I know we are just talking about, you know, releasing that feature for private repos. I know that's been kind of in the works and been asked for it for a long time. Was there any particular challenges uh, in implementing that feature for private repos? So for Public repos, I'll start talking about public repos and talk about why it's challenging to move it over to private. For public repos, we don't tell our users anything. We just, um, you know, we just send the detected tokens to our partners. For private, we actually have to show our users some sort of user interface. And because we have to show our users some sort of user interface, then we have to make sure that what we're showing them is high value and high risk. So we're showing them important things. So one of the biggest problems that we had to to face with that was how do we make sure that we're showing them things that are important? So no, not, you know, random strings or GUIDs that happen to match the reg regular expression, but like actually like this is a secret, you should do something about it. And then the other half of it is like, what's the user experience of dealing with that? So what's the developer experience of handling a committed secret? Because, you know, you and I can imagine we're developers, we've been writing some, we're trying to ship a feature. And it's like, you know, the ninth hour, we're almost there. And then GitHub's like, yo, here's a secret. It's pretty much close to prod. Like, do something about it. And we don't want that experience because it's a little bit, it can be a little like gut wrenching if, you know, whoa, I just committed this AWS secret. Like, how do I, you know, deal with that? So we wanted to ensure that we're actually holding developers' hands through the whole process and making sure that we're not creating really stressful situations unnecessarily. So, yeah, that's. It's, yeah, so it's been an interesting journey translating from public to private because of those those particular concerns. So we've talked a little bit about the user experience, and I feel like now you got to show us what the user experience actually looks like. Yeah, let me just share my screen. Um, so before this, I had created a Buki demo repo, you know, to just showcase how this works, and I committed 
a secret. Uh, not a bunch of secrets, but one. One token. Um, and you'll notice right here is that we're like, we say one right there to match the fact that we found a secret. And in, within this tab, there's a detected secrets section. And there, the token shows up as a Twilio API key. In addition to this, we will send um, folks an email that says, hey, we detected it's a secret. You should probably go check this out. So Twilio um, is click. one of our partners, and yeah. we know what their API keys look like. And so that's how we were able to detect it. Yes. Yeah. And so, you know, we show them, we show folks this, the secret, where we found it. We give some, them some sort of guidance around, like, here's what you should do with it. So, you know, you can either rotate it or revoke it with Twilio. Um, and sort of like why this is a risk so people should know. Then you can... The developer could either say, that's not real, it's a false positive, it's used in test or won't fix. And if they if it is a real secret and they decide to go to Twilio and revoke it at Twilio, or rotate at Twilio, they can then say, oh, this is revoked. So I'll just say, assume that I've just done that and I'll say it's revoked. And then the, the alert will get closed. So you'll see zero secrets here. And this note, there's not going to be any count here as well. Nice. And... I just learned that there's also a reopen button. So I could also go in there and then um, basically say, oh, no, I was mistaken about how to handle that secret. And I can actually reopen the issue. Yes. Yeah. We've definitely heard like people wanting to be like, oh, this was I thought this was a false positive, but it's not actually not a false positive. It's a real positive and things like that that happen all the time. So you can reopen it to make sure that it's still an alert that's showing up for you and so that you can decide what to do with that later. So I can just reopen it and then. Very cool. Um, I super like that. So if I'm a developer, uh, where do I go to sort of start using this feature now? So for public repos, you don't have to do anything. We just automatically um, scan public repos um, and do that with our partners. For pub private, you have to reach out to our sales team and like and um, basically get our advanced security offerings added to your um, to your GitHub package. Uh, yeah. And then if you want to be a partner, you can email us and we'll help you become a partner as well. That sounds great. So we'll share the links um, in the show notes for this video. So you can all check out the beta and you can also see how to become a partner. Um, and thank you so much, Bookie. This has been really, really good. Um, and uh, this has been GitHub Checkout. Uh, please hit the subscribe button for more videos on security related topics and more. And I'll see you next time. Bye.